everybody. Um, happy Wednesday. It's not that happy because it feels like a Thursday, but it's Why? not. I don't know. It just all day in my head. I'm like, it's Thursday. And then I'm like, no, it's not. So I don't even really actually think it's Thursday. I think I just really want it to be Thursday. Yeah, Thursday's pretty good. Yeah, because, well, I, I mean, it's a long weekend, so working and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, Thursday is better than Wednesday. Um, with that being said, it is Wednesday, and we're not going to complain about that. Uh, we're good with it. So, uh, it's not a bad day. Tomorrow is meant to be not great. Um, but Friday, better, and then sunny and nice for the entire long weekend. Yay! Touch wood, I know, right? Like, fingers crossed. And starting next week, this is good to know, uh, that our temperatures, uh, overnight temperatures, are starting to get up uh, to be uh, steadily around uh, 7 uh, degrees. Uh, pretty good if you've been hardening off your plants and climatizing them. We can start getting them in the ground. Last year, I get it, we're, we're impatient. Me too. Um, and last year, uh, Jenny and I didn't plant until June. It was June 1st. It was June 1st weekend uh, when we planted. And our flowers and uh, crops and everything did amazing. We, uh, we got great harvest. Everything matured, including the sunflower. Um, so it's, it's not too late. Yeah, the sooner the better. But uh, putting it out sooner because you think it'll be better and then getting snow, not bueno. You know, again, don't worry if you put your early ones out. Uh, uh, snow peas, uh, kale, spinach, uh, carrots, radish. They're going to be fine. Even if you've got some pansies out, uh, they're going to be okay. Um, but tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, I, I'd be gun shy. So that's the great thing. Perfect segue. Um, that's a great thing about these planters. So if you remember what we said, um, it's, turn it around. We want to see the strawberries. Um, it's great uh, to have a uh, planter like this because it is portable. Uh, we can pick it up and we can move it. Uh, and another good thing about this as well, eventually the tomato is going to fill this cage. No doubt. It might even get bigger depending on if you prune it. Speaking of pruners, I got fun new pruners to show, but anyway, we'll get to those in a second. Um, <laughs> I'm very excited about off camera. I was walking around pruning everything. Uh, one of our friends uh, from House Plants, Lanchi, came over and was like, "Fine, here's a plant." Now, I was very happy to be able to use them. I've never used these before. Okay, we'll get to them. Um, but the other great thing about having a planter like this, not only is it portable. But if it's not going to be that bad, uh, and you are worried about a little bit of frost, the frost blanket will drape perfectly off this and not sit on your plants. So this structure in the middle has a uh, number of benefits. And like I said, eventually the plant might get too big, you might find you having to use bamboo, or you're going to just cut your tomato uh, and get it to fit. So on that, uh, how do we go about maintaining a planter like this? So. What we said was one of the cons was watering. So we watered this uh, pretty heavily yesterday. It was a relatively cool day, so it's been 24 hours. I do a check, take it out. It's damp, but it's not wet, okay? That is not saturated soil. So uh, if it was me looking after this, and for now it is until we give it away, Yay. I'm gonna water this again today, simply because uh, my three veggie, my pansies will take it. I'm not worried about them at all. Remember, we put them in to attract the pollinators to let them know what's here. Uh, my other three plants, uh, my cucumber, my strawberry, my tomato, uh, they all want a lot of water. And on a side note, if a plant wilts, um, a tree or a perennial, um, is this like directly in the camera? Wow. How to tell that I never did communications for a living. Just move that directly in front. Um, if you have a perennial or a tree, uh, and it gets a little wilty and it's like, oh, I need a drink, it's actually a good thing. Uh, those roots are exploring and the tree can handle it. But you don't want your production annuals getting like that because it will stunt the growth. Um, if it's not photosynthesizing, it's not creating the sugars, 
and putting out the abundance of fruits and whatnot uh, and flowers uh, that we want, uh, it, it's going to need all of the energy it can get. So going in the wilt isn't a good thing. However, the other flip side of me being able to say, oh, uh, it's going to dry out quickly, is you have to be careful on overwatering. Yeah, it's got drainage, absolutely. Um, however, if you fully saturate it uh, and it doesn't get a chance to drain fully out, uh, you're in trouble. Oops, garbage. Um, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to end up with uh, root rot, uh, introducing pathogens. This is already a target for aphids and whatnot. So you really, really, really want to be careful on that. Okay? So a few other things you can do with maintenance. Your cucumber is going to grow wherever it wants. So you may find as it starts growing and it gets leggy, start encouraging it to the front. The next day that leaf might be over here. Keep putting it there. Eventually it'll be long enough it's here. That's where it's going to grow. So you want to train the growth. The strawberry, you can have it trailing. You can also have it running. The strawberry's roots are going to be so shallow, it's not going to interfere. Like we said, it may kill your pansies, um, but that's not the end of the world. So you want to train your plants to go where they are. Same with the tomato. Make sure it stays in the cage. You may find you put this out and it's in full sun, but the vast majority of the sun is over here and your tomato starts growing like that. I've seen it happen. So just make sure, and that's fine. Just make sure you keep it tucked in the cage so it doesn't grow out here and the cage isn't doing anything and then your tomato breaks. So training, you know what, we can make notes on this as well. Things that we have to keep an eye out for with our planter is, uh, we're gonna call it training. Training the plants, okay? And then the other one, and this one is the trickiest one, is watering. Water. And one thing I'll say on the water, if you're unsure, uh, water less amount more frequently until you learn. So you may water it and then you come out two hours later and you're like, oh my God, it's bone dry. I've literally seen that happen. Water it again, you give it a better drink and then you're like, oh great, that lasted X amount of time. Until you get down to it where you're like, I know exactly how much it needs. If I fill it with water half inch from the top, uh, it stays moist until the next day and it's good to go and you'll learn that that's that's the whole point so we've got uh training the plants watering okay the next one and i have to mention this because i have heard it uh before is deadheading okay so we deadhead um annuals and the reason we deadhead annuals is we want them to put out more flowers we do not deadhead veggies and i have seen it happen i've had people go i don't understand why i didn't get any strawberries and i'm like okay walk me through what happened and they were like well i did everything right i fertilized it i made sure it had lots of water it had a lot of flowers when the flowers died i cut them off that's your problem the 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 strawberry forms from the dead flower the strawberry is simply the seed pod so <laughs> i'm gonna get the seeds on um you don't want to deadhead them no matter how ratty they look um you've got you know this is an abundance of flowers 40 flowers and they all start dying at the same time and now you've got 40 brown shriveled up flowers good because those 40 brown shriveled up flowers are going to turn into 40 plump red delicious strawberries however we are going to deadhead our annual flowers now, I've, I've only used these literally for five minutes. Um, they're thumb pruners. Ay. And basically, it's an anvil and a blade. You do want to be careful because you're using your finger as the stopper. But I'm pushing pretty hard there and I'm not cutting in. Okay? Great thing about these is you can work. You can pick up hose, watering can with these still on so you're not constantly reaching for your pruners. When you're done, will slip into your pocket with my brain they'll slip into my pocket and they'll go through the laundry but that's okay it's going to be clean and all i'm going to do is just reach in grab the flower and pop it off like that and it was that easy and you can see 
I got a really clean cut, okay? A nice, clean, accurate cut using these. So you want to deadhead your flowers, you don't want to deadhead your veggies, okay? I'm gonna correct that. You want to deadhead your annual flowers, you don't want to deadhead your annual veggies or fruits. Deadheading, uh, we do that, it's gonna put out more flowers. Now technically that would work with the strawberry as well, but we're not growing the strawberry to get more flowers, we want all the flowers to turn into fruits. So that is going to bring us to our next one, which is fertilizing. Okay? And the reason we fertilize, there's a number of factors. One, I've said this before, um, if I had to pick between having a good amended solid soil or fertilizer, I'm going to pick a good soil every time. However, I don't have to pick, so I always pick both. Always, always, always. I never pick one over the other. Um, I will literally always do both. And it's especially important uh, for plants in uh, raised planters. As we've touched on, it's going to be exposed. So it's got wind, it can get cold, it can get hot. It's much more exposed than having those roots underground where it's got a layer of the insulation on it, which is the earth itself. There's no mulch in my pot. There might be mulch on the ground. So we really want to make the plant as strong as possible uh, to be able uh, to push out all of the flowers and all of the blooms. And honestly, it's as simple as starting a fertilizer program um, and keeping it up. Every single one of them will be different. So if I read the back of this one, um, so this is one, okay, it's a one liter jug and I need to mix five milliliters one uh, teaspoon per liter of water every 15 days. This is gonna go a long way, okay? Uh, so always read the instructions. Keep your fertilizer in a cool, dry location, like under the sink. Uh, don't leave it in an unheated garage over the winter, especially a liquid, it will freeze, it'll separate, or the bottle may burst. Um, so always keep an eye on it, and it will last until you're done with it. Pick the fertilizer that's right for you. Now tomorrow we're going to talk more about fertilizers, exactly what it is, what the numbers mean, what we have to look for. But doing the tomatoes, uh, this is the one I wanted, uh, make sure you use this one. So this is the other tomato fertilizer. It literally is called essential on the label. Anybody who's grown tomatoes, uh, a lot of times it looks amazing, the plant's doing great. Um, it gets the beautiful flowers on it, uh, then the green tomatoes, and everybody's excited, then they go red, and then they get that black spot in them. And the black spot tunnels right through the fruit, and essentially, for the most part, makes the fruit inedible. That's blossom end rot. Tomatoes are naturally deficient in calcium. Add calcium, hey presto, you're not gonna get that. Literally, this will combat you getting that. So. There's a lot to follow through to make sure that this comes uh, good. However, water and fertilizer, both of these are water soluble. Mix them in your watering can, boom, you've done both jobs in one. Training the plants, you've done watering, you put the watering can down, you go do, 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 takes a minute, deadheading, same thing. You've done training your plant, then you go around, you go snip, 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 clean it up, you're done. All the maintenance that this requires could be done, so watering is going to be daily, everything else as needed, but all of it, if I had to do all of this in one day, four minutes tops, three minutes tops, it may take other people who aren't as quick a bit longer, but it's not going to take you any longer than 10 minutes, and you're going to reap the benefits. So, that's what we're looking for, keep an eye out if you want to win this, Brandy's giving it away, and we'll see you all tomorrow when we talk about fertilizer. Okay, bye everyone!